Bureau. Okay, Daniel, this public feud just keeps going and going between the two here. You know, we see the president tweeting about it. What do you make of his decision to kind of keep it going? Yeah, he is not moving off this topic, even though the White House said yesterday, and they've been saying for a couple of days, uh, let's not talk about this anymore, and we shouldn't be engaging in a back and forth with this Florida congressman. And so his tweet this morning only, you know, re-engages the fight. I don't expect it to go very lo uh, much longer, but it's hurting the White House because they should be talking about their priorities like tax reform. And I think most Americans see that Kelly misstated what actually happened. And so it doesn't seem like they are uh, in the right on this specific part, although I think there are some Americans that say, you know, why, is, uh, why are Democrats in the White House engaging in this at all? They should, this should be a nonpartisan issue. I want to ask you about this disagreement over General Kelly's mischaracterization of the speech that Congresswoman gave back in 2015. You saw that back and forth with Sarah Huckabee Sanders and our Chip Reid, you know, suggesting that the general is above reproach simply because he's a general and you shouldn't question him on that. What, do you, what is the White House saying about this? So they backtracked on that uh, in a statement to CNN yesterday. They said, of course, you know, anybody can be questioned. Uh, but that still underlines the fact that, uh, you know, Kelly said something that was wrong. And I, Kelly is normally a truth teller. You know, he's been getting a lot of praise over the last couple of months for bringing order to the White House. But clearly he made a mistake in this. And I, it may not have been intentional because it was so easy to find this video. And so uh, clearly his remarks on that specific statement were not vetted or fact-checked before he said it. And so I don't think he went out there a few days ago and said purposely, I know I'm going to you know, lie to the American people on this. I don't think that was his uh, intention that day. And the president also tweeting about tax reform this morning and writing budget that just passed uh, as a really big deal, especially in terms of what will be the biggest tax cut in U.S. history, mainstream media barely covered. Talk to me about how crucial that victory was for Republicans and what does it tell us about what comes next regarding this push for taxes? So they had to pass a budget, uh, you know, before, uh, you know, soon amount to, to actually get tax reform rolling. And so uh, they, this is a crucial victory in a year that they haven't seen many victories. And so what goes on from here is that they will start holding hearings on tax reform, uh, hope to have a vote in the next couple of weeks on this in the House, and then it moves to the Senate, uh, where it's facing some opposition because there's a, a bunch of Republican senators that say this tax reform package is just a tax, big tax cut for the rich, and it's going to blow up the deficit, hundreds of billions of dollars added in deficit spending. And for fiscal conservatives, this is a real red flag. And so uh, this is still an uphill battle for them. Meanwhile, Daniel, we've also heard from former Presidents Bush and Obama. They delivered speeches this week criticizing the president, although they didn't name him by name. And also former White House chief strategist Steve Bannon. He fired back at President Bush in a speech yesterday in California. I actually want to play you a bite from that. President Bush, to me, embarrassed himself. Speechwriter wrote a highfalutin speech. It's clear he didn't understand anything he was talking about. I want to apologize up front to any of the Bush folks outside uh, in this audience, okay? because there has not been a more destructive presidency than George Bush's. What do you take away from sort of this fight between the, st the traditional GOP establishment and folks like Steve Bannon? It'll be interesting because you're going to see uh, statements in a couple years from, you know, once Trump is no longer in office, say, you know, from top Republicans to a crowd like this and say, you know, Trump's presidency, uh, you know, could have been was or was very damaging to the Republican Party's brand. And so, you know, both of them, uh, you know, have are going to face heat on this. And so uh, this, you know, Bannon has long hated George W. Bush for the last several years. He thought that uh, going into into Iraq was a bad decision. Uh, you know, spending all this money uh, wasn't good uh, because Bush was supposed to be a fiscal conservative. And also, particularly the immigration policies of George W. Bush, you know, who was a compassionate conservative. That was his uh, label that he put on himself. And he does not like that. Uh, Bannon is very anti-immigration. And so Bush does not, you know, by, uh, you know, for President Bush to abandon Trump, he was, he was really never with him in the first place. Yeah. But to throw him under the bus is kind of a betrayal in Bannon's mind. Daniel Littman. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.